This is the first in a set of videos that will deal with the advanced properties of the voltage source in LT SPICE. I've already got a new schematic selected here on the LT SPICE uh, program and I will start by adding a voltage source. And then adding a ground connection. And that's all I need. I uh, hit escape at this point. That's all I need to um, actually do the simulation on this. Now we're going to start with the pulse source. So we'll move to the voltage source and right click on that. And we get the dialog box here that uh, describes the voltage source. We'll click on advanced. And in the advanced, we have several different options on what functions the uh, voltage source can perform. We'll start with the pulse voltage source. You'll see several parameters that are available in the pulse voltage source. And these are just the parameters that describe uh, the function of the pulse and how the pulse is going to look. The V initial is going to be the initial voltage of the pulse, the initial value of the voltage source before the pulse takes place. I'll start this at uh, negative 1 and then we'll go with the on state voltage right here and we'll just set uh, that at 3 volts and we'll test that out to see what it looks like. We'll do a simulation. During the simulation we're going to have to tell the uh, LT SPICE how long to run the simulation so I'm going to put a stop time of 20 milliseconds and that's all the information I need for that source. Okay now I've got a graph on the top and I've got the schematic on the bottom set up and as I move my cursor around the schematic you can see the cursor changes to a voltage probe as I put it on a node. So if I click on that point right there I'm going to get a graph of the voltage at that point. We can see up here on the graph that the voltage starts here at negative 1 volt. You can see it in this region of the graph right here. And then at 0 milliseconds, it goes to 3 volts and stays there forever. Let's make changes on the pulse source uh, specifications here. We'll right click on the voltage source again down here. And we'll put a delay in here of 1 millisecond. 1M will give us a millisecond delay. OK that. And then we'll do a re-simulation. And we can see that uh, we get a 1 millisecond delay before the pulse actually starts. Very simple there. Let's make another modification. We can specify a rise time. And I'm going to specify a 1.5 millisecond rise time here. OK that. And do the simulation. And we see here that uh, in one and a half milliseconds, the pulse rises linearly, or the voltage rises linearly from negative one volts to positive three volts. We can continue making changes on these parameters uh, to investigate what happens with the pulse source. We can specify a fall time, and I'll specify a one millisecond fall time. And with the fall time, we have to specify an on time. Uh, if we don't specify an on time, then the pulse will never uh, go back to its original value. So the on time for this pulse, I will specify as 2 milliseconds. And we'll OK that. And re-simulate. And you can see that the pulse, the on time is the total time that the pulse is at its full voltage value. And then we have a 1 millisecond time that it actually falls back down to its uh, original value of negative one volt. And we can make uh, one other change or two other changes here. We can specify a period. We can see that this pulse takes about, it starts at one millisecond and it ends at five and a half milliseconds. So let's put a period in of uh, six milliseconds and re-simulate and we'll see that this just creates a pulse train that will continue on forever. We can specify a limited number of cycles here and if I specify two cycles and re-simulate 
then the pulse train stops at two cycles and notice that the whatever I specify as the initial voltage is also the final voltage.